Hey everybody, Darren Voros here. Today I wanna to walk you through how to submit the perfect mortgage application. A friend of mine who's a mortgage agent reached out to me recently and said, Darren, can you please do a video on how to submit the perfect mortgage application? He said, you would not believe some of the things that are submitted to me such as 35 screenshots or leases that are not signed or pertinent documents that have all the information blacked out. And when you submit your documents like that to your mortgage agent or to your bank, it's their responsibility then to organize all of your documents and put them in the right order to submit them to the underwriter. And if it takes them a half a day or a full day to do that, they're not gonna be super excited about working on your files moving forward. So I thought I'd put together this video on how to submit the perfect mortgage application so that you can save your mortgage agent and you a whole bunch of time. And I know what you may be thinking right now that this may not apply to you because your mortgage agent just asks you for the document they'd like you to submit to them. But I can almost guarantee that when you see the list of items and how they should be submitted, you're gonna to wanna to change up the way that you submit documents to your mortgage agent. Oh, and one more thing. I don't know about you, but these days I'm not sitting on title on too many of my properties. In fact, my joint venture partners are often on the title of the mortgage. They're the ones communicating back and forth with the mortgage agent. But it's your job as the real estate expert to manage that relationship too. Making sure that your joint venture partner is submitting documents to your mortgage agent the way that they want to be received. So it's really important that we submit our documents to our mortgage agent or to our banker in the proper order and in the proper format. That way they're gonna be able to turn around those applications just that much faster, which is good for them and it's good for us. This helps build that relationship between you and your mortgage agent who is a huge part of your real estate investing team. If you're relatively new to me and my channel, I talk about three main subjects, real estate investing strategies, tips and techniques, financial freedom and renovation and construction. If you haven't done so already, you can subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell, and please feel free to leave comments and questions below for me. And without further ado, let's get into it. Before we get into the list of documents you wanna to submit to your mortgage agent, it's important to understand why it's important to submit a good mortgage application. There's a saying in real estate that the person that holds the gold makes the rules. You can either fight those rules and push back on them, which usually won't yield the results that you're hoping for, or you can just suck it up and gather the documents and submit them to your mortgage agent and hopefully your mortgage agent can get you some access to that gold. The choice is ultimately yours, but here's the reality of the situation. You're going to be asking for millions of dollars of funding, so you need to submit quality applications, treat it like a business, and work in a professional manner. Let me walk you through the list of items that you need to submit and the order that you wanna submit them in, and I'll leave this in the description below as well. So the first thing on the list should be your identification. This should be your passport and your driver's license, and you should have the front and back of both of those documents submitted. If you don't have a passport or a driver's license, you'll need two forms of government issued ID, and you can check with your mortgage agent to see which forms of ID will be approved by the underwriter. The second item on that list should be a personal net worth statement. This should be a list of your assets and your liabilities, as well as three years of address history if you've moved in the last three years. If you're looking for a good fillable and printable version of a personal net worth statement, I found a good version at lawdepot.ca, so I'll leave that link in the description below. The third item on the list should be the two most recent years of tax returns. If you're an employee, that should be your T4s, some recent pay stubs, and a job letter confirming your employment with that company. If you're self-employed, you wanna submit the last two years of your T1 generals and your last two notice of assessments. And I think it goes without saying, but if you have not kept your tax filings up to date, you will have to catch up on back taxes in order to be able to submit a mortgage application. Speaking of taxes, the fourth item on the list is proof that all of your recent taxes have been paid. The easiest way to do this is to get a statement of account from the Canada Revenue Agency. And if you haven't done this already, I would suggest going to set up your My Account or My Business Account with the CRA so you can access these documents online. And again, I'll link those websites in the description below. The fifth item on the list should be a job description, and this is very important if you are a self-employed individual. This job description letter should lay out where you get your income from, how often you get that income, and what's the sustainability of the income that you receive. The sixth item on the list should be your mortgage statement of your principal residence if you have one. Mortgage statements are generally issued at the end of each calendar year, so you'll wanna get the most up-to-date version. Along with my most recent mortgage statement, I also like to submit where my mortgage is currently at. So I'll go into my online banking profile, click on the mortgage, and download a PDF of the most recent payment that I've made. The seventh item on your list should be your property tax statement for your principal residence. Similar to my mortgage, I like to get the most up-to-date statement that I've received from my municipality. And if your municipality has the option to access your tax information online, I like to go in and find out where my taxes are currently at and submit that to my lender as well. The eighth item on your list should be your lawyer's information. That should include the actual name of the law firm who's representing you, the name of the lawyer that you're using at that firm, the firm's address, 
their phone number, their fax number, and their email address. And the ninth item on your list should be a copy of a void check. I know, it's 2020, who has void checks? But most financial institutions now have an option to access a void check through your online banking, or you can download a PAD form and submit that as well. There's one more set of items that you may need to include if you own additional rental properties. For every rental property that you own, you wanna submit the mortgage statement, the property tax, the leases, and three months bank statements showing proof of deposits. If you're like me, some of my tenants submit two transfers because they're roommates. Make sure you leave a note on the bank statement to link the deposit to the lease that you've submitted as well. And this is why I like to have separate bank accounts for every rental property that I have. So when I'm submitting documents to the lender, it's a lot less transactions for them to look through to find out the information that they need. Along with these items, your mortgage agent is most likely going to ask you to submit an actual mortgage application, as well as submit some information on the subject property you're looking to acquire. Often just a copy of the listing from your agent is satisfactory, along with a signed and executed copy of the purchase and sale agreement. Once you've gathered all of these documents, you wanna put them in the order that we just went through and you wanna combine them all into one PDF document. If you're not sure how to combine multiple PDFs into one document, there are all kinds of YouTube videos showing you how to do that. I'll link some in the description below. If you're a Mac user like I am, you can put them all into one folder in the right order. You can select all of them. You can right click on them and then scroll down to quick actions and you can create a PDF. Depending on the size of the PDF, you may have to compress this document in order to be able to send it to your mortgage agent. Or a lot of times I just use a service like Dropbox. I put the file there and then I send a link to my mortgage agent who could then download that file if it's a larger file. In my experience, most mortgage agents will not accept documents off a USB stick. And that's simply because in most cases, they don't wanna be plugging an external device into their computer system. You know, with all the viruses going around and stuff. Anyway, a couple of final things to keep in mind. Please make sure that all of your documents clearly show your name on them somewhere. And even after you've submitted all the documents in the order that we just went through, I can almost guarantee that the lender will come back and say, we still need more documents. So you can kick and scream obscenities at your computer screen and at your mortgage agent, or you can just gather up the documents, submit them, and close the deal. I hope you guys enjoyed that walkthrough of how to submit the perfect mortgage application. If you did, go ahead and hit that like button below. You can also subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell, and please feel free to leave comments and questions below for me. You can also follow me on Facebook, Instagram, or check out my website at darrenvoros.com. With that, I'll say thank you guys so much for watching. I wish you the best of success on your real estate investing journey, and I look forward to hearing your success stories very soon.